Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. A recent Mayo Clinic study found that premenopausal women who have had their ovaries removed have an increased risk of developing chronic kidney disease. Previous, previous research conducted in animals has shown that the female hormone estrogen actually helps protect the kidneys. That led Mayo Clinic researchers to wonder have, if... That led Mayo Clinic researchers to wonder how removing both ovaries would affect kidney function in older women. And here to discuss is co-author of the study, Mayo Clinic nephrologist, Dr. Andrea Kata. Welcome to the program, Dr. Kata. It's nice to meet you. Thank you very much. It's wonderful to be here. Dr. Kata, nice to have you on the program. And an interesting subject. So take us back, if you would, to the, to the animal studies that led you to study this in humans. Did someone have a theory that estrogen was did somehow protect the kidneys? Yes, um, and this sort of stemmed from really observations in humans. It's rare it kind of goes from humans back to animals and <laughs> back to humans again. But women um, tend to have a slower progression of chronic kidney disease than men up until the age of menopause where the rates kind of become similar. And so there was this observation for a long time that maybe there was a protective effect of being a premenopausal woman and perhaps of estrogen and sort of protecting the kidneys and preventing progression of chronic kidney disease. And so there was uh, then animal studies sort of looking at this in, um, in many different ways, but um, estrogen does seem to protect uh, the kidneys. It pre um, prevents scarring, has some uh, beneficial vascular effects as well. Um, and um, those sort of observations and humans and animals kind of set the stage for this study that we wanted to look at premenopausal women who have their ovaries removed, what happens to their risk. Are you sort of suggesting that everybody, males and females, have chronic kidney disease if they live long enough? <laughs> yeah, there is a certain, yes, there is a risk of developing chronic kidney disease. Actually, you know, everyone loses some kidney function with aging. I mean, that's something that we know, um, that we know happens. Um, the, these definitions of chronic kidney disease are, you know, sort of applied similarly in men and women. Um, and there is some question of whether that's appropriate, you know, should we be using the same cutoff for what defines chronic kidney disease in men versus women, knowing these different rates of progression. But that topic aside, it does seem clear from both the observational data as well as these sort of initial animal studies that estrogen is probably good for the kidneys, um, whether that translates into um, sort of how we translate that information into our care of patients is, is another question. Well, before we get to that, just as a definition, as you were saying, what is, what is chronic kidney disease? That's a great question. So, um, so the kidneys' um, main job is to basically filter the blood of waste products and get rid of that waste in the urine. Um, and so um, chronic kidney disease is really defined by a reduction in the, the ability of the kidney to filter the blood and, and clear that waste from the body. And so we measure that with something called the estimated glomerular filtration rate, which is a mouthful, but it's really the amount of blood that your kidney is cleaning and filtering in a minute. Um, and so that um, GFR that we've set as being abnormal is at about a level of 60. And that's the criteria we use to define chronic kidney disease in our study. So as the kidneys get older, they're less able to do the work that's needed. That's why, as Dr. Shive said, you live long enough. Yes. Probably everyone will get this. Right, right. But estrogen from the ovaries to bring us back around yes. seems to be protective. So it, how did you figure that out in this study? How did you do it? Well, so um, this is a, a, a really interesting cohort. So Dr. Roca um, and the group at the Rochester e Epidemiology Project had developed this cohort of women from the Olmsted County population, um, which uh, the group included women who had undergone surgical menopause. So it had both ovaries removed prior to the natural age of menopause. So they had not gone through menopause yet. This was, they went at you know the time of their surgery and then matched them to a woman from the community who hadn't had this procedure and then followed them over about 15 years. Mm. And the goal of their study was really to look at what is the effect of estrogen on the woman as a whole? So what's the risk of mortality? What's the risk of developing all sorts of different chronic kidney diseases? 
I'm sorry, I said chronic kidney diseases. I meant just diseases. I was sort of one track. Like Nephrology mind. Yeah, osteoporosis. Cardiovascular sure. disease, dementia, sure. um, you know, all sorts of um, disease processes. And they had published their results, I believe it was in 2016 in the Mayo Clinic proceedings, showing that women who had had oophorectomy, bilateral oophorectomy, were at increased risk of developing uh, multimorbidity. So uh, acceleration of the development of chronic kidney diseases, and they had an increased risk of mortality. And actually, in that study, they had looked at some sort of diagnostic codes for chronic kidney disease, and um, there was a signal there. It wasn't quite significant, but it um, piqued their interest, and they knew I was interested in sex differences in kidney disease, and so that's sort of how the, the study came, came about. And you found that, in fact, women who had had their ovaries removed when they were younger, mm -hmm. when they became premenopausal, they were more likely to develop kidney disease. Exactly right. And both ovaries or just one? Both. Okay. For this study, we looked at both. D would you say to uh, women who have been advised when they're younger to have, uh, it usually goes with hysterectomy, doesn't it? I mean, if you have yep. a total hysterectomy, you mm -hmm. have the hysterectomy. You have your uh, uterus removed plus your ovaries. Yes. Would you say save your ovaries if you can? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. It, and it's an important point because this study and to who the recommendation applies to. So this was not women who have, you know, BRCA mutations or very high risk of breast or ovarian cancer because of sure. family history. So that's that's a different conversation. So this was women who are really at average risk for ovarian cancer um, and um, they had in our group, it was 90% of um, the women with oophorectomy had it at the time of hysterectomy. So that is, you're right, that's the most common uh, reason that they're having it. And there's been a big shift. I mean, it used to be that um, the feeling in the obstetrical community or the, the obstetrical and gynecology community was, well, let's just take them out. Get We're going to be in there, there you yeah. know, um, the, and this will decrease your risk of ovarian cancer. And we don't have a great screening test, which is true. It does uh, mm. decrease that risk by about 80 to 90 percent. It's actually, interestingly, not 100 percent, but it's <laughs> 80 to 90 percent reduction in that risk. Um, but now I think the pendulum has swung and we're realizing, well, the ovaries are doing something beyond just reproduction. They're an endocrine organ. So they're doing things before you go into menopause, certainly with estrogen affecting all your body tissues, bone, brain, kidneys, what have you. And then even after menopause, they're secreting testosterone, androstenedione, and those can be converted peripherally to estrogen. And so you're removing all of that endocrine function, um, which is save know, the ovary sounds save, like to me save and, the it, it, there, so there has truly been a paradigm shift in the minds of most gynecologists that if you don't need to take the ovaries out when you do, do a hysterectomy save them it, exactly right and i think um this is becoming um, more and more i think more and more people are aware of this um, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology has sort of put out a statement saying, you know, you should really think about this. And, but there are other people that say, gosh, I've practiced this way forever. You need to, you know, sh you know, ovarian cancer is devastating. And the f the flip side is, well, increased mortality, cardiovascular risk, <laughs> dementia, you know, chronic kidney disease. Those are also pretty devastating. So you have to really uh, explain this to women um, um, prior to proceeding. Wow. We have 30 seconds left. And finally, what, what's your next research project going to be? So I'm very interested in this uh, relationship between um, uh, estrogen and kidney function. And so um, is there what um, effect does um, changes in reproductive function and estrogen secretion have on the progression of chronic kidney disease? And um, should we be trying to think of different therapies um, that might help women with uh, chronic kidney disease um, preserve their kidney function for longer as well as their, their quality of life? All right, we've been talking about how removing the ovaries at a younger age may increase your risk for chronic kidney disease, and that may not be all. We're, our guest is Mayo Clinic nephrologist, kidney specialist, Dr. Andrea Katah. Dr. Katah, thanks so much. Thank you very much.